If you're struggling on how to create a base mesh in a primary 3D package like Maya, Moto, or 3D Studio Max to then take into a sculpting package like ZBrush for further detail, then you clicked on the right YouTube thumbnail. I'm gonna be explaining everything you need to know how to create a proper base mesh to then take to a digital sculpting package in my first episode of 3D Modeling Explained. What's going on, you 3D modeling beast? This is JL Musi, and today is the first episode of my new series called 3D Modeling Explained, where I take your most asked questions about 3D modeling, and I try to answer them in a straightforward fashion. This series is gonna focus on pretty much workflows and overall concepts, and it's not gonna be very uh, 3D package dependent. So whether you're coming from a package like Blender, 3D Studio Max, Moto, or Maya, um, you're gonna be able to actually put these uh, workflows, uh, these concepts into play. And uh, on the flip side, it's not gonna be a very step-by-step -step type of tutorial. This first episode is gonna be focusing on creating a proper base mesh to then take into a digital sculpting package like ZBrush. How this episode came about is my man Gilu, all the way from India, actually asked this question about creating a base mesh in a primary package or a base mesh and then taking it uh, into a package like ZBrush for further sculpting. I also have a brand new set of 3D modeling inspired t-shirts. So if you wanna go check them out and support the channel, I'll throw the link down below. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and download the Hard Surface Modeling Cheat Sheets, which is a great companion piece to all my videos. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. So tip number one, as far as having a good uh, base mesh to take into a sculpting package like ZBrush, is even quad distribution, right? So when we build the base mesh, and this happens a lot with human heads, is the fact that you know, we have uh, this figure here or this uh, this head and the edge flow typically tends to be more dense in areas that are going to deform, like the mouth, the eyes, the nose. And when we get to areas like the forehead, a lot of times uh, artists kind of forget that this is going into a sculpting package, right? So if we were to leave it here in a primary package like Maya, this would be okay. But when we actually take it into a sculpting package, uh, it does actually, um, the base mesh actually does change uh, the function a little bit, right? Uh, and we're going to need even quad distribution. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna go in here and delete this extra edge loop, but a lot of times we'll see base meshes like this that are pretty dense here in areas of deformation. Areas like the forehead, the side of the head, the back of the head, uh, they're actually pretty uh, light, but this actually can cause a problem when you take it into ZBrush, right? So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just export this as OBJ, and then I'll jump into ZBrush. All right, so we have our head here imported. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it onto the canvas. Let's go ahead and just change this to a gray material. And let's go ahead and activate the uh, polyframe. Uh, and you see here that uh, we have a mesh that's uh, pretty uh, well divided here. And then uh, towards the forehead, we have these large spans. So uh, what's gonna happen here, and I'm using my mouse, but it's still gonna illustrate the point just fine. So let's go ahead and just subdivide this a couple of times. I'm hitting Control D here, and we're gonna change our uh, stroke here to drag direct. And we'll get an alpha, something that resembles uh, poor details, because this is really when it's gonna matter the most, when you have those tertiary poor details that you're trying to sculpt, and you're low on geometry on certain areas. So I have my alpha loaded here, and I have this to C sub, which is gonna just subtract it. And now if I'm dragging, uh, you see how nice this actually comes in. Uh, we're currently at a subdivision level of six, which is somewhat high, right, for this. Uh, so you see that we have good detail here, but once we start moving over to the forehead, you see how pixelated that's going to be, right? Um, so essentially what's going to happen is that we're going to have to push this way past six, right? We're probably going to have to go to a level 
probably like seven, eight, nine, or ten. So essentially, what's going to happen, and uh, depending on your computer, you might get this error here about the memory, right? So essentially, what that means is that you're really going to have to push this really, really far. Uh, and here, just you're going to have way more subdivisions than you actually need. So that's why it's really important to keep your subdivisions actually even, even though you might not need it in that primary package, you'll definitely need it in a sculpting package like ZBrush. My next tip for a base mesh uh, coming into ZBrush is to actually store a morph target. Why is this important? Well, let's go ahead and jump here back to ZBrush. I'm just gonna get a standard uh, cylinder here. And we're gonna notice something that once you actually divide your mesh once, ZBrush will actually deform it. And even if you go back to level one, as far as the subdivision, it actually won't ever be the same, right? So uh, here is just a cylinder from ZBrush. And what I'm gonna do is come here into morph target and I'm actually going to store a morph target. This is going to store the original uh, shape or the original form of that uh, base mesh that you brought in. Especially if you have something that's uh, in your primary package and the UVs are laid out, the silhouette is laid out and you don't need any small changes to the actual shape or silhouette, then the morph target when you're baking out those normal maps and they're going back, right? You definitely wanna have morph target in place so everything's being calculated off the same exact base mesh that you brought initially into ZBrush. So what I'm gonna do here is just grab a standard primitive from ZBrush. I'm gonna make this a poly mesh 3D and we'll go in here, we see that we don't have any subdivision levels yet. Uh, what I'll do is I'll come down here to morph target so we'll go down here and hit store morph target and that's gonna preserve the original shape. So we'll hit store morph target and then we'll go back here, start adding some geometry levels, right? So you would assume that if you go back to level one, this is our uh, original shape, but it's not, right? We could actually see how now we have kind of this hard bevel. So if we go here to uh, poly uh, frame, right? We can definitely see it, okay? Uh, this is kind of what the standard primitive that we started with actually looks like. And even though we're back at level one here, we see we, we get this kind of deformed look. Uh, so this is where the morph target comes into place and we can go back in here and uh, what we can do is go back to morph target and we can simply go back to switch, right? And if we have to bake any maps, anything of that nature based on that original mesh, uh, the morph target is there to pretty much save us and preserve our initial shape. So the next tip into sending your base mesh over to a sculpting package like ZBrush is that you need to reinforce your mesh with holding edges or else your shape will pretty much crumple, right? You need to reinforce those edges. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do it in a package like Maya, but really these are just basic modeling tools that any package like Blender and 3D Studio Max also have. And then I'm also gonna show you how to actually do this within ZBrush if uh, you're more comfortable there, or maybe you have the mesh in there and you don't wanna to have to switch back uh, to your primary 3D modeling package. So let's go ahead and look at uh, how to do this in a package like Maya first. Um, what we can do is, uh, one way is just to select all our edges, and then we can go in here and just apply a bevel with a couple divisions, right? So uh, if we go in here and apply a smooth, which is essentially pretty much what subdividing is. And let's go ahead, add the uh, divisions here to four. So you see that our mesh is holding pretty good and those sharp corners are gonna hold up. The other option is what I call fencing. So you can go in here with like the multi-cut tool and basically just uh, fence these corners in, like so. In Maya, you could just middle mouse click to redo the LS menu command, and we can put up our divisions, 
and there we go. So that's being held up pretty well. So let's go ahead and jump in and look at how we could actually do the same thing in ZBrush. So in ZBrush here, I just have a standard cylinder. I'm going to make this a poly mesh 3D. You see, as soon as you make it that, you, you're going to have more options. So I'm going to make it a poly mesh 3D. I'm going to go ahead and enable the Z modeler tool. And it looks like I'm already there, but if you're not, you can just hit B to bring up the brushes and then Z to bring up the filter. And then you can hit M one more time. That's your Z modeler tool. And by default, um, you can go ahead and add a insert edge loop tool that looks like the default uh, tool. Um, so you can just click here and you see that we're adding a edge loop here and we can add one here as well. Uh, now, one of the things you'll notice is that here it's going to be a little bit harder. So there is another option, but if you add uh, two edge loops there and we start subdividing, right? You see that it's kind of working. But what I like to do in this case is actually use polygroups and then uh, crease by using polygroups, right? So I'm going to undo this. That's going to take care of our edge loops that we added. And if we go here to the polygroups option, what we can do is since this is a flat uh, surface here on top and this is a curved surface, uh, we could actually polygroup this by normals, right? So what we're gonna do is group by normals and now you see that we have a polygroup here, polygroup here, and a polygroup here. So what that means is that uh, now these are uh, split up by polygroups. So I'm gonna go here to geometry and go to the crease option. And within the crease option, uh, we have this uh, crease polygroups option, right? So it's actually going to look at the polygroups and create creases around those, right? Uh, so what I'll go ahead and do, this is actually set to 15. I don't need it that high. Um, what I can do is just bring this down lower. If you want any explanation or a further explanation on any of these uh, buttons or what uh, these fields do, you can just hold down control on your keyboard if you're on the window side, and it will bring uh, the explanation. But I'm gonna drop this down to four, and now, if I do a crease polygroups, uh, you see that it's gonna give me uh, creasing around the polygroups, and that's pretty much exactly uh, what I wanted, right? So let's go ahead and zoom in quite a bit here, and you see that we have some nice creasing, so now if we do uh, Control D, subdivide this, and we hide the poly frame. Uh, this is actually being held up pretty well. And the last tip is not really so much of a tip, but I'm gonna show you how to basically put everything all together, right? So here, I have this BMX bike that I built for a Maya hard surface modeling course, and I'll go ahead and include that link down below. But uh, you see that this was pretty much modeled all for subdivisions, right? So we do have pretty much um, those holding edges, uh, and then, what I also did is actually quickly lay out UVs just for this uh, example, right? So I just did a quick UV layout, uh, nothing super clean or fancy, but just for this demo, right? So it looks okay. Really what I'm uh, concerned about here looking for is that I don't have any crazy stretching, but essentially what I'm going to do is take this over ZBrush, uh, sculpt some uh, weld marks, and then take it into a package like Substance Painter, and then you're gonna see kind of the full workflow that would I implement from Base Mesh and Maya to ZBrush uh, sculpting, and then finally uh, creating the texture in a Substance Painter. So from this point, what I'm gonna do is just export this and we'll jump over to ZBrush. So here's my mesh. So what I'll do here is just give this a basic material I'm just gonna go in here, give this this matte cap metal, and then before I do anything, I will store that morph target. Divide this a couple times. And what I'll do is, I'm gonna use the blob brush here. Activate symmetry. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but you guys pretty much get the gist of the whole workflow. You can decimate this to bring down the poly count. Uh, I'm just going to export it straight out because I know my computer can handle it. But if you have maybe like an older computer, 
uh, that can't process that many polygons, especially when uh, you're bringing this into a substance as well. Um, you know, you could definitely decimate this to bring the polygon count down. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and export this. So I'll export this. And what's important is that uh, you actually export this file with this uh, underscore high prefix. So I'll go ahead and export it. Uh, we'll jump into uh, substance. So I'm here in substance. I'll go ahead and just start a new uh, file here. I'll go ahead and select my mesh. And this is going to be uh, the fork uh, low. Very important that you have that low prefix on there. So we'll hit OK. That's going to bring in my mesh. So there it is. Uh, we'll go ahead and set this to, since I had a pretty uh, sloppy UV layout that wasn't really maximized, um, I'm going to go with a 4K. But, you know, if you have a good uh, UV layout, you could probably go stick with a 1 or 2K for this. Uh, what I'm going to do here is now I need to bring in that mesh from ZBrush with all the high res details to actually be able to create that normal map from. I'm going to go to uh, bake uh, mesh maps here. I'm going to go ahead and just change the output size to 4K. I'll go ahead and look for that uh, mesh that came out of ZBrush. So this is going to be the fork uh, underscore high. It's very important that you have the fork underscore low and the fork underscore high. I actually have a couple of videos on that. I'll post those in the link uh, in the description down below. And then uh, we only want to go ahead and check the normal map option. So we'll go ahead and bake uh, these mesh maps. All right, so there is my normal map detail that came in, as you can see. Now, if you want to derive the other uh, maps based off the normal map, so what you could do is go to bake uh, mesh maps. Uh, you could uncheck normal and then uh, you could just check all these guys on or whichever maps you need, but it'll derive uh, the information uh, from the normal map and not just the mesh itself, right? So now we can go ahead and do that. So there's all our maps baked. So if we wanted to see maybe like the uh, ambient inclusion map derived off that normal map, we can just click that arrow from here and we can look at the ambient occlusion so you can see that it's taking that normal map uh, information into account and we could even see it uh, on other maps like the curvature as well so that's exactly what we wanted so let's go ahead and wrap this up i'm going to go to smart materials here and let's look for a nice metal all right so i'm just going to give it this uh, steel material here and if we just kind of scrub the lighting you can see the effect and we could even go into IRA. So that looks pretty good. You pretty much see the whole process of having a mesh in Maya, having the UVs laid out, being it taken to ZBrush to do the actual uh, sculpting for the normal map generation. And then we finish off in a package like Substance Painter where you combine everything and then you build uh, your maps on top of that high res information which initially created that normal map. That's all the time that I have for you folks. Thank you so much for tuning in to my first episode of 3D Modeling Explained, which I'm gonna be taking you guys' questions, you guys' problems, and answering to the best of my abilities. So let me know how I did in the comments down below. Also, let me know of any issues that you guys are having, pretty much as far as anything 3D modeling related, and drop those in the comments down below and I will go ahead and check them out and try to make a video around them. Until we meet again, folks, I will catch you next time.